just because we want everyone to have a chance to arrive. Um, but we're not going to delay too much. And so, um, again, thank you all. And then once we get going, the first part of the program will be, uh, you'll see more of me. Um, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about Lucille Bishop-Smith. I'm, I'm also going to do introductions and housekeeping and all that once we get going. And then there'll be, just to give you an idea of what's going to happen, then um, Chef Carpenter will uh, work on her demo. And then we'll also have a little break in between. So if you do need a little intermission, I know it's we're trying to manage the heat in the room here. Um, I know some of you might be experiencing um, some of that early summer heat here in this building. But um, anyway, so we're going to, um, there will be sort of an intermission period. And those of you who want to play along to my 20 questions in that intermission, um, feel free to stay in the room. And then, um, and then Chef will finish up the demo. And there will be tasting at the end. So there will be a treat at the very end. Buying? Buying? Um, no, just tasting. I know. Well, um, I, at the end, I am sure that Chef Carpenter will be more than willing to let you know exactly where her business is located and what her hours are. So you too can. Um, it might not be this particular recipe, that it, but Chef Carpenter has. Um, we'll talk about that later, but she has won many awards, and she is basically the hot new chef here in Fort Worth. That's what I say. So, <laughs> so, so. N no, it is it is hot in the kitchen, but um, she she is uh, she is amazing, and. Um, so anyways, we're going to wait just a few more minutes, and then we'll get going. And thank you all for your patience. Okay, so we're going to get the show on the road. Thank you all for coming today and helping us celebrate um, and commemorate Women's History Month. And um, so we have basically a 
two for one special. I like using these food related terms <laughs> just because today is all about food. Uh, so um, we are we are honoring Lucille Bishop Smith, who was a remarkable woman, but also um, we have the honor ourselves of having Chef Katrina Carpenter help us honor Lucille Bishop Smith. And so I'm gonna, um, oh, I should start off with uh, who I am. And <laughs> so um, my name is Gabby Keenitz. I'm a librarian in the Genealogy Local History and Archives Unit for the Fort Worth Public Library. So this is a public library program. Um, and thanks to the Como Center also, the um, Como Community Center, which is also part of Fort Worth, um, for giving us this space. And um, just a little bit of quick housekeeping. If um, the restrooms, there's a family restroom just a little bit down the hallway on the on the same side of the hall that we are on and um, the other two restrooms are locked but if you need to get farther um, if you find the family restroom someone has occupied it already just wander a little bit farther down um, along the wall and um, keep to the left and there are some restrooms down there as well um, we are going to do a presentation on the history of Lucille Bishop Smith at the beginning while um, Chef Katrina Carpenter is preparing to recreate one of the very, very famous uh, recipes developed by Lucille Bishop Smith. And then um, after that, there will be some demo on the part of Chef Carpenter. And then there'll be a little intermission. And those of you who decide to stay in the room, I'm going to um, potentially put you on the spot with a little, a few questions about um, family recipes and anything else I feel like um, asking you about. Um, but anyways, feel free to wander around briefly at that point. And then afterwards, Chef Carpenter will finish up the recipes and then there will be, or the recipe that she is demoing, and then there'll be a tasting at the end. So don't all rush up at the, at the very end. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with an introduction of Chef Katrina Carpenter, um, who you see before you madly prepping this fabulous food for us. So, um, so this is a biography written by Chef Carpenter, but I'm going to do a bit of ad-libbing also. Um, feel free to... So um, Katrina Carpenter is the co-owner and operator of Carpenter's Cafe and Catering. Katrina has a passion for food and serving others. That passion is what gave birth to Carpenter's Cafe and Catering. Um, she also, as far as, um, based on my research, she began in mid-2019 and had planned for a brick and mortar opening in early 2020, but we all know what happened in early 2020. Um, so, um, much like uh, Lucille Bishop Smith, who overcame some challenges, different challenges. I mean, Lucille Bishop Smith, her challenges were essentially Jim Crow and women having very limited financial resources in her time for she, um, Chef Carpenter, obviously um, trying to open a business at the beginning of a pandemic, and yet she is still here, which is amazing. Um, so. Uh, Carpenter's Cafe and Catering has been honored to have been awarded several business awards, such as Best New Restaurant and Best Fries. I believe they are brisket fries or the famous fries. Um, so this is from Fort Worth Magazine's Best of Fort Worth for 2021. So um, despite the pandemic, Chef Carpenter has thrived. Her business has thrived. Um, she was the runner-up of the Rotary Club of Fort Worth's Minority Business Award of 2021, Best of Winner 2020 from the Fort Worth Weekly. Carpenter's Cafe and Catering has also been featured in publications such as Fort Worth Weekly, Made Worth Magazine, and Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Um, I also want to mention, I have not tried this myself, but I have heard from other people that her smoked chicken salad is something worth making the effort to go <laughs> and see her. So look at that applause. <laughs> so this is a winner. Um, 
So Chef Carpenter is a native of Fort Worth, growing up in historic Lake Como community, uh, or this neighborhood. So she is from this very neighborhood. Um, she is also a proud graduate of O.D. Wyatt High School. She is also a graduate of Prairie View um, A&M University, and I note that because <laughs> This is going to become important as I talk about Lucille Bishop Smith. Um, the other thing I also want to note is, um, so before she put on her chef's hat, she was um, an employee. She was a teacher at Fort Worth ISD. So um, I feel like she went from out of the frying pan into the fire, literally. So, um, <laughs> um, so. Um, so when she's not in the kitchen, she enjoys spending time with family and friends. She also makes time to give back to her community that has poured so much into her. Um, so she served as a Rotarian for the Rotary Club of Fort Worth, um, Braver Together Ambassador in the 76104 area. Um, so that's a zip code. Um, it's a historic south side um, and that actually is where Lucille Bishop Smith um, lived um, so she's a member so Chef Carpenter is a member of the Fort Worth Metropolitan Black Chamber of Commerce and by the way they just recently elected a female president their first female president I believe so another awesome thing for women's history that was announced um, just shortly before this month and Chef Carpenter is also a Fort Worth Hispanic Chamber of Commerce member. So, all right, so we are going to um, begin our presentation on um, the life of Lucille Bishop Smith. Um, Lucille Bishop Smith has passed on, um, but she lived here for many, many years. Um, she was not born in Fort Worth. She was born in a little tiny town called Crockett. I believe it's actually the county seat of um, Houston County in Texas to Mary Jackson and Jesse Bishop. And she's one of 11 children. Um, so um, not unsurprising if you're born basically in a farm community. There's going to be a lot of kids to help out on the farm. Um, her mother actually ran the farm um, so, and Lucille Bishop Smith attended several colleges, Wiley, Sam Houston, or Huston, actually I think it's pronounced Huston, Prairie View A&M, see the connection here, and Colorado State College. Um, she met her husband, Ulysses Samuel Smith, while at Samuel Huston, and they married in 1911 or 1912. There are going to be a little somethings or maybes as I talk about Lucille Bishop Smith. Unfortunately, um, Lucille Bishop Smith did not um, write her biography or have anyone else write it for her before she passed on. Um, it would have been awesome if she had, and we would have a lot more details. A lot of this has just been gleaned from historic records. Um, although Lucille Bishop Smith was interviewed many times by the newspaper, um, I often find that um, Lucille Bishop Smith would spend a lot of time just talking about the community that she was trying to help, um, and talking about her present work and not necessarily about her past. Um, she and, oh, and by the way, some of you who have lived in Fort Worth for a long um, period of time might remember um, U.S. Smith is, um, he had a barbecue restaurant. Um, he was quite famous for his barbecue. So both um, Lucille Bishop Smith and her husband were um, both um, food entrepreneurs. Um, they had three children, Armstead B. Smith, Gladys Smith Hogan, and Ulysses Samuel Smith Jr. All of them went to college and all of their grandchildren went to college. So they both came from really small, sort of impoverished lives and they really made something of themselves and sent all of their kids to college and then all of those kids, the grandkids, all went to college. And uh, Lucille Bishop Smith was um, understandably enormously proud of the accomplishments of how, you know, her drive had really um, changed the life for herself, her husband, and for um, her children. Um, all right, next slide, please. 
So um, you're going to hear about how incredibly busy she was, and not just with the um, catering. Um, she started off working as a seamstress early in life um, after she um, left her small town, but she very quickly became a well-known caterer and chef here in Fort Worth. Um, and her most famous recipe was the chili biscuit recipe, which actually is going to be the recipe that you are going to um, experience today. So this recipe was served on American airline flights at one point and the White House. Um, it is served to this day in her great grandson's restaurant in Houston. Anyone want to take a guess what the name of that restaurant is in Houston? Lucille's. <laughs> so you all know that, yes. So um, her grandson is, um, he's probably just about as energetic as she is. Um, he has started a foundation recently and um, he has his restaurant called um, Lucille's, but I think he's started another restaurant. So I don't, I don't think anyone from this family sleeps. Um, so, um, so she catered for very prominent organizations here in town, uh, the Bankers Association of Texas, the State Judges Convention, Professional Women's Club, and for famous visitors such as Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Roosevelts had a son who briefly um, lived here with his wife. He married uh, the daughter of, a, um, I think, sort of an oil, um, oil man, and then, um, so Eleanor came pretty regularly. Um, and Lucille Bishop Smith also catered when um, Joe Lewis, the boxer, I'm hoping I said that correctly, um, he was in town, and also Marian Anderson, um, the famous singer, um, opera singer. Um, Lucille Bishop Smith was the first food editor for Sepia Magazine. Um, that was a local um, magazine here in Fort Worth for um, quite a few decades. Um, she had her own radio cooking show. Um, I kind of wonder, I guess it's like food podcasts nowadays, like, you know, um, we're all used to television, but, you know, she operated in a time period before um, the radio show. Um, we looked hard to find which radio show it was, so if anyone remembers hearing it, um, feel free to let us know, because we would love to add that to our um, bit of information we have on her. Um, so her skill as a caterer um, led to her appointment as head of food services at Camp Waldemar, and so that camp still exists. And um, so um, for more than 30 summers, uh, Lucille Bishop Smith and her husband ran the food service at Camp Waldemar. Their, um, Recent, fairly recently, there was a cookbook that was issued of recipes from Camp Waldemar, and there are a number of recipes that were developed by Lucille Bishop Smith that are included in that. Um, so she's the longest head of the food services, longest serving head of food services at Camp Waldemar. Um, so there are probably many, many women out there who remember fondly <laughs> the food um, that was served there. Um, so. Um, so the camp um, was able to get her and her husband to join the staff um, in 19... Uh, oh, sorry, I'm going to skip that part here. Um, so, so many of her dishes are actually still served at the camp. Um, and so we can change to another... Um, so that is down in Hunt, Texas. Um, I kind of think of it as sort of horse camp for the well-to-do. Um, <laughs> uh, it does it does other things, but it's it's very it's very a well-to-do place. Um, and I think many of the young women. It used to be just women. Now it's uh, co-ed, and then I think in the summertime now they um, they host conferences, but. Um, it was built in the 1930s, and uh, I think it, the first year they kind of struggled, and um, after that, someone once said that the only reason it survived was because uh, Lucille Bishop Smith ran the food, and that it was so delicious. So, <laughs> um, so 
Um, she was a pioneering educator. Um, in 1927, she began working for the Fort Worth Public Schools. Uh, during her tenure, she developed the Fort Worth Vocational Evening School Program, which focused on domestic service training. Um, in 10 years, she um, increased the number of departments from three to 11, um, the number of teachers from three to 17, and the enrollment increased from 56 to 1,400 people. So she really changed the lives of a huge number of people. Um, she also fundraised to, um, to develop, um, there were originally three training centers and she got the new equipment and modern equipment installed in these training centers. Um, in 1937, the state put her in charge of the evening school program that was the headquarters in Prairie View A&M where she trained teachers throughout the state. In 1951, Prairie View asked her to develop a program to train people to enter the industrial food service. Um, so um, on February 1st of 1953, the commercial cooking and baking department at Prairie View A&M um, started and within six years the program developed into a two and four year training program with paid apprenticeships with hotels throughout the state. So not only was Lucille Bishop Smith um, teaching students but she wasn't just releasing them into the wild like oh here you're on your own. Um, she put a lot of effort into um, making sure that her students would have a place um, to work. Um, she also wrote manuals for the state that were used as vocational texts. And are we, are we getting close to, let's see. So I can, shall I, I got two slides left. Okay, so we're gonna go through the last two slides. Um, and so, um, Lucille Bishop Smith was an entrepreneur and innovator um, in the 1940s while still teaching for most of the year and managing the food service at Camp Waldemar. Um, Miss Lucille Bishop Smith, she compiles the recipes into a cookbook titled Lucille's Treasure Chest of Fine Foods. It was republished five times. Um, she also developed her famous hot roll mix, um, the first ready hot roll mix developed in the US. The only one that beat her to the market was Aunt Jemima's ready cake mix. And there isn't really an Aunt Jemima, but there definitely is a Lucille's. So um, after the first month of sales, she made $800 and she was only charging 25 cents for each packet of hot roll mix. So do the math. Um, she donated that money to her church, uh, St. Andrew's Methodist. Um, she was featured in many nationwide publications, including um, Making Money in Your Kitchen. I think she already had that part down pat. And um, she was also featured by Ebony's Cooking Columnist. Um, she also, speaking of getting people hired, um, she got Tarrant County to hire the first agricultural extension workers. So yeah, this, I, this woman did not sleep. So, all right, our last slide here, philanthropy. So this is where she, and so, by the way, these are all things that are um, developing as an entrepreneur. Um, she was already retired at that point. So most people are in their rocking chairs, uh, not Ms. Smith. Um, so in 1964, the Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce opens up the commerce. Um, uh, they open it up to women. She joins the very first year and just four years after joining the Commerce, the women's division, she's awarded lifetime membership. And that is awarded when you sell other memberships to other people and you get other people to join. So she's one of only three people um, that year. Um, she participated in the All American City Gift Lift um, that was organized by the women's division and she personally baked over 300 fruitcakes to send to service members in Vietnam. 
And many of the letters sent by soldiers mention these fruitcakes fondly. So all of you fruitcake haters might want to consider asking what this recipe is all about. Um, so she used her renown to encourage support of bond issues, to modernize facilities and schools. She collaborated with other organizations to provide enrichment and learning opportunities for children and youth. Um, she received many, many awards, understandably. Um, Federated Women's Club Women of the Year. Um, in April 28th of 1966 was proclaimed Lucille B. Smith Day in Fort Worth. She was also appointed to the Governor's Commission on the status of women in 1969. So um, she belonged to the United Negro College Fund and the NAACP, which should be unsurprising to everyone. And in 1999, she was selected as one of the 100 women of the 20th century by the Women's Chamber of Commerce of Texas. So think of how many women lived in the 20th century. So. Anyways, I'm sure I've talked long enough. Without further ado, Chef Carpenter is going to take over. Thank you so much. Um, so, first of all, I'm honored to be here in my community. Um, and so this, the kitchen feels like I'm at home. So I'm gonna act just like I'm at home. <laughs> is not gonna, I'm gonna pretend like we're not recording so that I'm not nervous and I'm gonna act like I'm at home. I'm happy to see so many familiar faces, including some who have been my sous chefs in the past. Whitney and Sean, yes, I'm calling you out. Um, I am going to recreate um, Madame Lucille Bishop Smith's chili biscuit. And I'm glad that they gave me some they gave me a little, they gave me some grace. I'm glad, I'm happy for that. So I'm gonna do my best at recreating the recipe. We've played with it a little bit um, and tried hard to get it as close as home as we could. Um, my dear friend Chrissy is going to be my sous chef today. She's gonna help me with biscuits and I'm gonna get started on the chili recipe and then we'll go to roll out biscuits and, and, and back and forth. I was giving them the eye because I wanted them to have some content to talk about while uh, biscuits are baking, but they assured me that they have more content to speak about, so we're fine. So we're gonna get started with the chili first, and once I get that started, we will um, work on biscuits. You know, I should have had some music or something playing in the background because when I'm at home cooking, I am cooking to music. Can we get a little music in the background so that it's not a little, it's not dead? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So I'm gonna start by, first of all, her recipe calls for, it, it's very simple guys. Um, it calls for, um, a ground meat, ground beef, um, a variety of spices, an onion, MSG only. That's it. It was as simple as that. So I'm going to add a few things to to the chili, um, not too much to take away from the originality, just a little bit to enhance some of the flavors that she had already put together and I'm going to start by dicing bell pepper, onion, and garlic fresh. Can y'all see? I can't see up there what they can see. I'm sorry. I let me let me get somebody to take let me get someone to take this out of my ear so I can hear you. Can I get the camera up there so I can see what's going on? You can't see me up there? Okay, good. As long as you can see what my hands are doing, I'm good with that. What is my opinion of the use of 
I actually don't have a problem with it. I know some people do. Um, I don't use MS, pure MSG. I will. I do like to cook with accent from time to time, but honestly, whatever floats your boat. If you do not prefer it, then I'm okay with that. And if you do, I'm all right with that too. Chrissy, can I get you to start the, this pan with a little oil for me? Down low. Down lower. We're going to oil that pan. So I like to chop all of my vegetables together and then sweat them in the same skillet. I'm sorry, who, I can't tell who's talking, but if you'll speak up, I'll try my best to answer you. No, let them repeat it. Onions, bell pepper, and garlic. Up higher. Higher, yeah. So fresh onions, fresh bell pepper, fresh garlic, cloves, and then we're just going to sweat them all together. And for anybody that is here that's vegetarian and wants to try the recipe, We've already put together a vegetarian um, chili also. Now let me know if you can't see or if you need me to do anything else. So I, in, in this one, I used Beyond Beef. So that's where the, that's where that's going to be your meat substitute, and that's going to be your main um, source of protein. What is Beyond Meat. Beyond meat? How many of you had heard of Miss Lucille before today? How many of you were, because uh, when I posted this on, that I was doing this on Facebook, I had um, a lady reach out and say, I used to eat at her restaurant. And so I started researching more than what I'd already researched to find that she had a restaurant on the south side of Fort Worth called uh, Smith's Cafeteria. Anybody here had ever eaten? So then I started researching even more to find that I actually had a lot in common with, um, with Miss Lucille. Did. Uh, we share a lot of commonalities. I'm sorry, Miss Ella. What was that? Yeah, I'm sorry. What are some of those commonalities? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. So um, she she was a caterer. So am I. Um, she did lots of work and attended. Back then, it was uh, Prairie View State College, and now it's Prairie View A and M University which I also attended Prairie View. Um, she was an educator, which I have also been an educator. 
she is an, was an entrepreneur, which I am also an entrepreneur. I mean, there's a, there's a, a long list of commonalities. So a lot of pressure when, uh, when I found out, and I just I hope that I can live up to um, some of the things that she's done. I'm going to heat this pot and start to brown the ground beef. Open the other one. special recipes? Is that what you're speaking of? Well, I'll tell you this. I have a family full of veterans on both my mother's side and my, my father's side. Um, and I come from a long lineage of cooks. And um, so I can't, I can say that I have encouraged them personally. Uh, <laughs> I can say that, but no, I haven't created any recipes that are, you know, just for like a, just for veterans. No, I haven't, but I'm open to ideas if you'll share them with me. Some things that I, to help me get, help me get involved, I'm open. Okay, so I'm sorry, did I hear Texas sheet cake? So that is one of, the sheet cake is one of um, a recipe. Texas tea cakes, right. Oh, Texas tea cakes? So I've not heard them called Texas tea cakes, but we do serve tea cakes in my, in my cafe. So maybe we can come up with something and add a twist to it for uh, veterans. I'm not opposed to that. So I've started to brown the the ground beef, and what, I've, what I am gonna do is add all of the, the uh, I'm gonna add the vegetables that I've sweat, and then I'm gonna add all the seasonings to it. I'm gonna call them out. Yes, Aunt Shirley. Yes. Well, you know, veg veggies hold water, right? Yes. Anybody that cooks cabbage knows that, you know, cabbage has it, it holds water. And so I am sweating the water out, um, that moisture out of the veggies. And how are we doing that? In the skillet. So they've already been sweated out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to add cumin, and I um, I am not a measurer. I am a cook by the eye and taste. So disclosure: onion powder, onion powder, onion powder. Can y'all can we can y'all hear me? I don't think they can hear me. Oh, okay. This this chili powder, guys. I, I I'm gonna share a secret with you all. We are, the chili that we make inside of the cafe. I do a brisket chili only when it's really cold outside, and a lot of the customers ask me to do it um, when it's hot. And I'm like, chili season for us is over, but they beg for us to do it all the time. I use a um, San Antonio chili powder that I get from Central Market. Nothing compares 
nothing compares. And so, chili powder. And then there's another one that there's another one that I'm gonna mix with it. If you'll grab it, it's in that Central Market bag, and I'll I'll share it with you. So you guys are getting some secrets that I don't I don't like to share. Cracked, coarse cracked black pepper. It's in that bag. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, it's right behind me. And then here's one from Sprouts. It's just their, um, their house chili, pe chili powder. Sprouts. I see some, I, there's so many familiar faces. Lori is one of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Lori and then I'll tell you, I'll point her out. Um, the very first article that was written about me, this is uh, Masa, or Mace, I'm sorry. Um, the very first article that was written about me um, came to a surprise. I didn't know that we were even being interviewed. My son um, was secret shopped in the cafe and it was right on time because I had been on him, on him, on him about you never know who you're serving, son. You always have to make sure your fingernails are clean, make sure, you know, just on him, on him, on him. And then all of a sudden, we got this message to our Facebook um, business page that says um, the article is going to be released tomorrow. And I was like, what are, what are, they, what are they talking about? <laughs> what article? A little bit of salt. Promise you're not gonna taste it. A little bit of accent. Accent is a is it's not just MSG, but it is it has some MSG. It's not straight MSG. So um, back to the article. Article came out, and I was like, oh, we well, were on the front page of Fort Worth Weekly. And I never knew that we were secret shops. And they talked about so much of our food. And I was like, Brayden C. And they mentioned his name too. And I said, see, Brayden, you never know who you were serving. So now, son, do you remember who it was? <laughs> and it happened to be Lori, Lori Wave, who has written several articles about us. Texas Monthly, um, uh, just a, a lot. And um, thank you, Lori. Thank you. Just thank, thank you for being here. So y'all, I'm going to add a, a can of tomato sauce to this, some water, and a little bit of cornstarch to let it thicken up and let it simmer. And while it's doing what it does, we're going to start rolling out biscuits. I want you to know that we've already prepared biscuits also that are in the oven. But we're going to show you all how we prepared those. This is just table salt. This? Yes. No, it's not. I did. Her recipe calls for only onion. Onion, garlic powder, onion powder, cumin. Um, no, no, just MSG, onion powder, garlic powder, onions, ground beef, and cumin, salt, and salt, that's it. And we did it, and we, we, we worked with it until we, we loved it, but I'm gonna, Add a little bit of me on, on that. And then hers asked for you to simmer it down for 45 minutes, but this I promise you is not gonna take 45 minutes. I also have um, 
in the in this pot I I had already opened a can of Rotel and I had two bay leaves in the pot already. And then so that y'all they can you can see we did a vegetarian version of the chili already. Yes, ma'am. I I like cast iron, but um, not for everything. As long as, to be honest, if I can find a really good non-stick pot like this one, then that's really my my um, my go-to. I have to be careful not to vet people's uh, product line, not surely. As soon as I, yeah, it's, all right, let's get started. So we're going to get started on um, the biscuits and roll them out. And as soon as we pan them up, then we'll turn it back over to the library. Actually, I had the pleasure of going to the library downtown and going through um, what's called her treasure chest. One of the, the um, her cookbooks is in the form of a, of cards. And I got to go, I sat for a while and went through those recipes. And a lot of them, of course, they're way before my time. But um, I do know that the library hosts a collection of them. I don't know about them being online. The chili biscuit recipe is online. You can access that one online for sure. Yeah. Black and Historical Genealogical Collection. So uh, you can come look at the recipes in the book. Uh, the family has a copy. I know that uh, Lucille's has one on display in Houston. Uh, I believe SMU also has a copy, but they're, they're rare and they're hard to find. So if you've got one, hang on to it. The Lenore Flowers Heritage Center Museum, located at 1020 East Humboldt, has a copy of the treasure chest and we also will allow you to to view that copy if you make an appointment and just to let people know and i hope i'm correct in saying this the location of miss smith's cafeteria is actually on evans avenue in the same block with the shambly library on that on that same side is where the cafeteria was there's a big vacant lot there now and I'm also told that her personal residence is right on the corner of Terrell and New York, uh, directly across from our Mother Mercy uh, Catholic Church. That's where they lived. And, and the, no, no. And the one that the, the, the uh, recipe card book that we have is part of the Tarrant County Black, so it sounds like they might have two copies. I, we have one. I At the, like okay. Last year. Okay, so yeah, so, and it would be interesting to see which edition you have at the museum because we have the second edition uh, at the library. Along, uh, the central, yes, yeah. 
So, it, but they are rare. So if you've got one in the family, hang on to it. They're hard to come by. Um, and people are now really trying to, to find them and kind of compare the different editions to, so it's something that a couple of people have wanted to do, compare those editions and really see what she changed. So I'll pass it back over, sorry. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> So we're, 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 we're actually supposed to demo the biscuit dough. Chrissy's a little excited and has already, and has already showed you guys what we cheated and did. But we actually have all the, all the ingredients out to show you how to make the dough. So we'll put this in the oven along with the ones that we already put in the oven. And then we'll show you how to make the uh, the uh, the biscuits. I'll tell y'all. I was now. They did give us a little leeway with the recipe. So all of um, all of. Uh, so you'll know that this is this one is not her exact recipe. Let me tell you why. Not a pastry chef, and Miss Lucille apparently was, and did a lot of work with yeast, mm -hmm. and yeast is not my friend, <laughs> and yeast takes f several um, other steps that we don't we didn't have time for in this demo, okay? Because it has to proof. Her recipe calls for I think proofing for like 45 minutes, mm -hmm. yeah. I use the self-rising flour. So really quick, we need to show the actual demo. And I had already poured this up. So this recipe, can you, I don't know if you can hear me, but this recipe, I did a buttermilk biscuit, okay? I saw some people out here with pens, writing stuff down. That's fine. I think I'll post, um, if you're not following Carpenter's Cafe and Catering, make sure that you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. And I will post, after my live is over, I'll post the recipe to this, this biscuit recipe. So, Chrissy, you got to tell them what we're doing. So we're gonna do for these Chrissy, Chrissy's going to tell y'all the measurements that she's putting inside of the... We're going to do two and a half cups of all-purpose or self-rising flour. I use self-rising just okay. so, because it, it, it helps me make sure they're going to rise. Well, no. Mm -hmm. This is Central Market's brand. I tend to um, be in Central Market a lot because I'm a spice person. And I love, I get lost in the bulk section of their spices. And so I, I kind of um, gravitate to a lot of the store brand items at Central Market. So Chrissy. To the flour, we're going to add a tablespoon of baking powder, half a tablespoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of salt. Do I ever use? Tell me what it is. Do I ever use? I'm sorry. It's 
Is it off 8th Avenue? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, my grandfather, before he passed, told me, well, I begged him for his, I begged him for his brisket recipe. Because when I met my husband, he was a natural born smoker, but don't tell him this, he might be watching. He knew how to smoke the meat, but that seasoning was not like my grandfather's. So we went and we spent some time with my granddaddy and I asked him for his brisket rub. And it took a while before he gave it to me, but he had them make his mix up. And so all you had to do was go inside of there and, and, and once you gave them the recipe, and they would label it whose it was, and they, he didn't have to mix everything like this, they'd have it ready for him already. So I know what you're talking about. I've not personally been, but I know, I know exactly what um, spice shop you're talking about. Yeah. So the vegetable shortening, make sure it's vegetable shortening, make makes a difference. Yeah. And I picked this up at Central Market also. <laughs> we do, we need to. Actually, actually, um, I'm sorry. Can hear. Actually, um, Miss Lucille's great grandson, who owns and operates Lucille's, just did a, a demonstration with Central Market too. I think it may have been a couple of weeks ago. You had a question? I did. Yes, ma'am. It says twelve to fifteen. Um, we doubled this. This the last one. The ones that we cut out, we actually doubled them because I wanted the biscuits to be a little bit thicker than what they were. And so we doubled them so that they would come up. They would. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So while we're doing this, we're gonna turn it back over to the library and then um, we're gonna allow the biscuits to bake. Give us about 15 minutes. And then we'll start um, putting together some of the chili biscuits for you to sample. Why, why, why did I or why don't? No, that's actually my logo. It's, it's a plate with, it's two C's. So there's two C's that make up a plate, right. Carpenter's Cafe, and then there's a, a fork and a knife. Okay. I'm at 1116 Pennsylvania Avenue. Our space is under renovation right now. Um, so we will not open it back up until probably late July, early August. Um, 1116 Pennsylvania. Yes, ma'am. So we, we, I know that they tried their best to tell our story. I guess I'll tell you a little bit. I'll, I'll go back over it a little bit. But we started our business in um, South Main Village. I opened a small trailer and on the corner of Vickery and Pencil, I mean, Vickery and Main. And we were there six months when I first opened. I planned to be there a couple of years. Um, when I left the school district in 2019, my contract ended at the end of June. And I opened the trailer the first week in July. So I never stopped working. And um, I found out recently why I never stopped working because my mama worked all while she was pregnant with me. <laughs> so, um, I was there six months 
And I planned on being there two years, but I was there six months. And then we acquired the space that we're in now in December of 2019. We had a soft opening February of 2020 to be closed March of 2020. And by the grace of God, we're still there, right? In June of last year, I cut the ribbon on our second location in partnership with the Magnolia Wine Bar. So that's two locations in less than three years in within a pandemic, right? And in December of this past year, I decided no more partnerships. Um, I just wanted to be free of all of that. And I wanted to recreate the space to represent us. And that's what we're in the process of doing. And so hopefully by the end of July, 1st of August, we'll be able to welcome walk-in customers again. In the meantime, we're still catering. If you have catering inquiries, you can visit my website. It's www.carpscafe.net to put in a request. And then we're also moving our food truck around right now until we open the space back up. It's, it's www.carpscafe.net. That's our website. It is, it's, all, it's on my website. So you can, you can, there's now a new tab on there where you can um, request to, um, for us to pop up. Our schedule is very, very, they keep us very, 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 very busy. And so if we can, we will you just put in, I, I recommend people, we're three, sometimes four months out booked right now. And we're still working on a small, with a very small staff. So, um, the food truck was stationed in one space, but like I said, at the end of December, I decided no more, um, no more residencies. And so it allows us to move it around. We, we missed those opportunities so much last year. People wanted us to come and service their events and we couldn't because we, that truck was privy to one location. And so we're moving it around this year. I don't know, you know, I'll have to ask permission. I, I mean, other than Lucille's right now, I don't, I don't know where he would get this. All right, I'm gonna turn it back over to you so we can finish. It, it was cut in together. Yeah. So we do the shortening first and mix all that with the flour. Then after that's combined, you add the butter. And both of those have been chilled. So if it's too warm, it spreads out, and then you've got soggy biscuits. And you don't get the layers you want in your biscuits. So you put okay. those inside. You put that mixture in the freezer for 15 minutes and let it chill. And then you, you take it out and add your buttermilk to it and start working everything together. Yeah. So for people who are online who um, did not hear the sous chef, because she's not mic'd, um, both the butter and the shortening are worked in, and they're both cold. Oh, no, this, um, so I think this mic is actually helping people who are online. So I will talk louder for y'all. Um, so, so I did want to mention y'all are like really giving Chef Carpenter a hard time about making things for the veterans and making her own cookbook. I just want to remind you that all of those things, Lucille Bishop Smith started working on them after she retired. So Chef Carpenter, <laughs> <laughs> Chef, Chef Carpenter is at the beginning of her career. So give her time and we hope she has a long and productive life just like Lucille Bishop Smith but give her a chance she's not yet in her 60s and 70s <laughs> so you all just have to wait <laughs> and so it turns out there is someone in the crowd here who actually worked at Camp w Waldemar and um, so, Ms. Clara, if you'd like to come up, because I love it when the audience participates, and she's going to give us some recollections of life at Camp Waldemar. 
And I think that is awesome. And you also, you said you were also a caterer. Retired. Retired, so. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Clara Moody. I'm also from Como. And uh, I did have the pleasure and the honor to work with Miss Lucia at Camp Baltimore. Uh, way we way it would happen when school's out, we had to pack our clothes and go and work, and that provided us with a paycheck. And uh, every time we were finished doing dinner, uh, I was in the baker department. We would have to come out because it was uh, young children that was out there and they were, you know, robolding and doing different crafts. But anyway, they didn't ever forget about who prepared the food. And so they, we would have to march after every meal and they would give us an applause for the baker. It's this one little thing that was, well, it's true. One, when I would bake a cake, I remember the cake would flop that first time. And then the, one of the elder ladies that was there, they said, you pregnant. Every time a cake drop, you know, you cook, you might not have ever heard that. And I was pregnant. <laughs> okay, and the last thing is, we used to do that monkey bread, fresh from scratch. And uh, we had to, uh, we go to our bed, we set our alarm, get back up, go knock it down, go back to bed, go and knock it down. So that was a lot of experience, and it's not only me, but a lot of my friends uh, was able to venture out and be an entrepreneur. And I did have a catering company, and it was very successful. I'm just retired, and it's a pleasure being here to hear the history of Miss Lucille. Thank you, and also you, Como Heights. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you so much. It's always great to hear stories from people, connections to history. And so anyone else want to talk about what your favorite recipes are maybe growing up? Um, so does everyone here have a favorite biscuit recipe that was passed on to them? How many hands? Hands? No hands? Come on. We, we have to have more than two people. <laughs> no? No, one's, no one wants to share? Do you want to talk? Uh -huh. Monkey bread? So that you're, so who passed on the recipe? So are you saying that your your grandmother she had her own recipe, but you developed your your recipe based on hers, or just inspiration? Ah, pound cakes. Now there's another good one here. So yes. Oh, so like sheet biscuits that your family would make, yeah? I know, that sounds, that sounds perfect because then you don't have to work up the scraps. You just cut it into a square, eh? Hey? Um, so I, I did want to mention, since y'all are being shy about um, recipes, so many of you have probably, or none of you potentially, have seen um, uh, Lucille Bishop Smith's cookbook. And the thing when you first see it is, there's a lot of Jello recipes in there, and then you have to remember the time period that these recipes were developed. And I think the first thing that really caught our eye, and um, when we were trying to develop this uh, this program, we were joking around on you know which recipes we were going to go for, and there is actually a recipe in there for I believe it's Jello guacamole. <laughs> 
remember in the 40s and 50s and well 60s and 70s how much jello was a thing so this thing oh it was guacamole jello with fruit on top of this jello mold with avocado and guacamole mixed in and i'm gonna try it i'm not a, i don't cook but i'm thinking i can handle jello right um, but it sounded interesting to me and then she had one that was had oysters, but it wasn't Jello. That one didn't have Jello. But it was there was so many Jello recipes on these cards. It was I didn't eat any of it when I was a kid. I think it was just clear, like basic, just Jello, like not flavored. But it was I mean it really was guacamole mixed in with like pineapples and fruit piled on top. It sounds, I will leave the fruit off, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try the guacamole jello. <laughs> I, I think it sounds interesting. She had one that was oysters. Yeah, it was a souffle and clearly souffles don't work too well with uh, demonstrations, but um, yeah, so there's a the recipe cards are all divided up into different sections and so there's a salad section but almost all of the salads are jello salads um there, there's no romaine you know there's like a little bit of salad like actual leaf lettuce that sometimes gets put in the center but um yeah there's not a lot of that um one of the things that i found really interesting so there's a there's a bean pie recipe in there. And so anyone who knows anything about um, Nation of Islam and their bean pies that they would make, but she doesn't reference the Nation of Islam and their bean pie. She refers to it as a Japanese bean pie. And the Japanese do actually eat um, sweet bean desserts. So it started me thinking about like, where did she compile all, like where did, where did her inspiration come from? And um, because I'm pretty sure that, I mean, that, Maybe at some point Lucille ran into someone who was smelling so good. Yeah. Instead of saying camel soup, let's just say noodles. Yeah. So. Good. That's awesome. So. <laughs> I, I know everyone who's watching online, that, that's, I guess that's the benefit of coming here in person. You get to smell the delicious smells. And then ultimately at the end, we have all these fabulous, fabulous, dishes set out for us to taste test and um, just so that y'all can see and I'm gonna pull my first batch the biscuits out well I'll, I'm gonna let her do that so that y'all can focus on that first and it's gonna be one and a three-fourths cup of buttermilk so there's one and three-fourths cup buttermilk I have to interpret for the people who are watching online <laughs> for the sous chef here. So she's gonna mix it till it comes together in a shaggy dough. Oh, we're gonna mix it till it comes together in a shaggy dough ball. It doesn't tend to take a long time because we've let everything set. I just wanna mention it's even more delicious closer to the uh, stove. So for those who are online, it, has to, it should all come together before you roll it out.
delicious biscuits coming out of the oven. Where's the brush? Where's the brush? <laughs> So her recipe calls for you to butter the bottom of the um, butter the bottom of the pan first. I didn't use butter because I wanted to cook them a, a little bit slower, and butter burns fast. So I used a baking spray. A baking spray. You, but now you got butter in the recipe you got butter on top can you show them the baking spray I'll show you the baking spray you got a generous amount of butter on the top you got a generous amount on the inside but I use yeah it is yeah yeah so I use that for cakes and we are not. <laughs> Whitney, would you like to come up and be my? <laughs> no, no, but we have dough left over that we can make dumplings with later. All right, so we'll start um, plating. Some of the You know, you know, this is people that have been to the re re restaurant several times that just want me to give away all my secrets, Lori. Between my family and uh, my customers, they keep me really busy. I've not had a chance to. Where does this one go? The bottom. Okay. That's fair enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. If what? I'm gonna speak that into existence. There's only one, but okay. One of, I'm gonna speak that. Hold on, please. I don't want the bottoms off. They're burnt. So we sell. There's a short version of some of the things that we offer inside of the um, cafe. You can get. Yesterday we actually had an event for the American Heart Association, and we served our Asian zing nachos. Chrissy's a fan. I love those. And then um, our smoked chicken salad. Um, our, one of our famous chicken sandwiches we served. But, and then we also did a crispy chicken cob salad. Oh, yeah. We may. All right. I don't want anything that's burnt on the bottom. So remember that brisket I was telling y'all about? Mm-hmm. Any? So, um, just want the bottoms. I just want the tops, Christian. But, so we also had um, what we call the savory Sunday in the cafe when we were pivoting through COVID. Because remember, we opened February the 16th to be closed in um, March. We 
we started what's called a Savory Sunday, and every first Sunday of the month, I did a um, um, a soul food menu. And so periodically, I do, but that is not something that I serve every day in the, in my cafe. No. Can you step to the side for me? So I'm gonna start um, plating these, and then if I can get a another set of hands to help pass them out. Chrissy, you can help pass them out. I just need one set, yeah. Yeah, we need your hand, your food handler's license, Lori. Can you go on that side? Napkins in. No, just. No, uh, probably so because it's, there's shit right here, right here. If somebody will go and pass napkins and forks and then the other person can go, that'll help. Everybody since Sean's talking, meet Sean. Everybody say hello to Sean. Yes, um, Sean was one of my sous chefs before. I did a reg I did a um, food demonstration before, and yeah, it didn't go over very well. They, you know, they tried though. They tried. Whitney's laughing because she was a part of it too. No. <laughs> I, you know, I appreciate y'all's help. I do. Thank you so much. No. Uh, yeah. Is there anybody that needs a vegetarian version? Let me know. I want to show you a vegetarian version, but after everybody gets started. Okay. This is the veggie one. No, it's just vegetarian. Okay, thank you. Especially when you're doing a pop up too. Mm -hmm. Yep. And plating on the spot. Is that the vegetarian? Um, yep, it is. I can tell. I can look at it and tell. I don't hear anybody talking, so that must mean <laughs> it's not good. Oh, no. Nah. Because I don't hear anybody talking, so that must mean. We did the recipe some justice.
I really I need to to figure out how to reach out or get connected with somebody over there. I don't know exactly where 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 location I'm going to be in yet. So I I can't share exact the exact location, but I will be the food truck will be um at Arts Goggle April the 23rd April 23rd I don't think they can hear me. Actually, it's Magnolia. Arts Goggle. So there's a website for Arts Goggle. And I, I, I'm not shocked that people don't know what it is because I didn't learn what it was until this mic. I didn't learn what it was until my first year in business. It is, so it's like a, it's a, a huge, um, a huge, um, April the April the twenty third, and it's going to be on um, Magnolia from Eighth Avenue all the way to Main Street. Okay. They shut the entire street down, and I think this year there are what three actual three to four food courts. Um, and so I am going to participate this year. April 23rd, there's a website for Arts Goggle. It's April the 23rd. It's April 23rd. There is a website for Arts Goggle that tell, it'll, it'll, uh, I'm sorry, what if? We can give you a whole nother one. Would you like another? Yeah. my best. <laughs> I tried. Okay, so how many more people? Because I still, I got biscuits to come out. And then the librarians in the back. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, Aunt Shirley. <laughs> Aunt Shirley makes one of the best deer chilies <laughs> that I tried to get her to let me serve in the cafe. Yes, please. Yes, please. They won't invite me to chili cook-offs in Fort Worth. I've tried. No, no. I understand why, though. It's all good. Gotta wait. Got, I got about 10 minutes on these biscuits that are in here. So I got a vegetarian one. But I got about 10 minutes left on those in the oven. Sorry, y'all. I did not. Everything you touch turns to gold. Well, thank you. All right. All right. So how did I do? Y'all, you can tell me. This one. I have about, I have about 10 minutes left. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I have about 10 minutes left on these other biscuits, and then I'll, I'll, we can do more. Yeah, you can get another one if you want. Sean, you're leaving. Yeah, we need to make something to drink really quick. It is. No, but we're going to make some tea really quick. Uh-huh. I need to rinse this so I can make these people come to drink real quick. Biscuits all night, all afternoon. Oh, not the biscuits. Let's make them some. There's no way I would have been able to you. Need a, around that, it's clean, but not like in here, uh -huh. around the south. Y'all, let me rush these. Yes, ma'am. I 
I don't have any cards on me, okay. but I will give you the information on how to get a hold of, how to reach us. I'll give you information on how to reach us. Somebody. No, I'm <laughs> Okay, I just wanted to. Okay, I wanted to close out the program because people are starting to leave, and I wanted to make sure we thank everyone. Um, particular thanks to Chef Katrina Carpenter for all of her hard work. Um, so also to the staff at the Como Community Center who were so gracious and. Um, I also want to thank people who shared their stories, particularly Miss Clara here who came up. And, um, and I also want to thank all of you for attending this program to helping, help us celebrate Women's History Month and to really make us celebrate the women who have gone before and women who are now, you know, really charting their destiny and making their own decisions and being successful. And so um, thank you to everyone for coming.